Thank you, Eunice and Ryan for that wonderful special music. And a very warm, but a very happy Sabbath to all of us. So this afternoon I'll be talking about a very familiar topic, I guess. You know, we are all familiar with the so-called Great Commission okay, that Christ gave to His disciples. Okay? We are also familiar, I guess, where we can find that passage. That can be found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. So let's start with those scriptures. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. I'm reading from the New International uh, Version. Then Jesus came to them, to the, the disciples, and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So the command was to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to obey everything that Christ has commanded or has taught. This is also the promise that Christ will be with the disciples to the very end of the age. So in this message, we will examine whether these commands, examine these commands, and see if it does apply to us through Christians. We will also try to look at how we can accomplish it from another perspective. Okay? We will try to do that this afternoon. Some have misconceptions on what it really means. Okay? What does it mean to go make disciples of all nations. Okay? For instance, some feel that this does not really apply to them because they are not ministers, they are not evangelists, they are not teachers, they are not preachers. Okay? At one time before I was baptized, okay, but I was already acquainted with the church teachings, okay, I thought along those lines. Okay? I said to myself, I'm not a minister. I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. I do not know anything about the Bible. Okay? I cannot go into discussion about doctrines or debate with someone else about the Bible. Okay? Or what it really teaches. Okay? I cannot do that. I have no theological degree to back me up if I dare to speak. Okay, wala pa akong PhD in theology. Okay, I do not have that. Okay. In fact, I was told as much by someone I know when I was drifting away from my former faith. Ano gagawin mo? Eh, yung mga pare, nag-aral yan ng apat na ton or even more, di ba? So they know about, I guess, from this perspective, they know what they are teaching or they know what they are doing, di ba? So I thought about it and maybe that person was right. Okay. What will I try to what will I teach rather if I try to preach? Okay, ano tuturo ko? What will I say? How will I say it? And I was left with blank answers. Ergo, I concluded, let the preachers or evangelists do it. Okay. I'll just listen, warm a seat, okay, listen, and I'll be happy, content with that. Okay. And now fast forward into the future when I got baptized, I think the question that I had then was still up in the air. But I heard messages here in this church that it's not enough to just pay and pray. Okay. Meaning, faithfully pay your tithes and pray for the work of preaching the gospel and for those who do the actual preaching. Okay. It's not enough. Sabi nung isang uh, nag-message nun. We need to be more involved. Okay? Well, that is something that you all can agree with. Don't you think so? We need to be more involved in this work. I think everyone needs to be involved actively in the preaching of the gospel. That's the work that has been given to us, right? We cannot just sit back and relax. Okay? Remember, the command was for every disciple. 
And I think some of us are just doing that. They are, they may not be speakers, you know, but they are inviting friends. They are inviting associates, relatives, neighbors, or co-workers to attend our Bible study series and church services. Okay? It's a step in direct, the right direction, I would say. And those of you who are doing that, you are doing great. Keep up the good work. Now, helping even just one person come to the knowledge of the truth because you invited him or her to one of our Bible studies or service and eventually that person made the decision to get baptized and be converted is a very, very good thing. Don't you think so? It's a very good thing. How can I say that? Well, there's a parable found in Luke that describes, okay, what happens over one person who repents and is baptized? Let's go to Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 7. Luke chapter 15, verses 3 to 7. Uh, this parable was told because Christ was, sabi ng mga He was mingling with the sinners. So-called sinners, mga tax collectors. Okay. Then he told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Okay. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? He iwan niya yung ninety-nine in a safe. And he will find that uh, go after that uh, lost sheep. Verse 5. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. Take note of verse 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous persons who do not, who do not need to repent. Okay? So that's the impact of what we can do here on this earth if we go preach the gospel and make disciples along the way. Even just one person okay, converted. Okay, it's all the great rejoicing in heaven. So let's see now what we can do to fulfill the great commission. The first part of the passage in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 states, Go and make disciples of all nations. How does that happen? How will this happen? We will let the Bible answer that. We read in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 11 to 15. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him that is in Christ will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Okay. So these passages are just saying people cannot be saved unless they believe in and believe Christ. Okay? They cannot believe in Him if they have not heard of Him in the first place. Right? They cannot hear of Him unless somebody preaches to them. And nobody can preach unless they were commanded or sent to do so. We, true Christians, are sent by the Lord to do this work, right? We were sent, so to speak, as the Great Commission passage says. Now, I think that there are several ways making disciples can be fulfilled, okay? Obviously, okay, someone had to really go out in the field to speak about all the things we know as truth, okay? And I think that was how it all started. Someone went out the field. The early disciples certainly did that. Okay? For example, after a great persecution break broke out against them in Jerusalem, 
they fled in different directions. Okay, nagkawatak watak ng mga disipulo. Okay, but they did not just flee for their lives. Okay, they did something else. Okay, and we read in Acts chapter eight, uh, verses four to five. Let's turn to Acts chapter eight, uh, verses four to five. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. So, kung saan sila napadpad, okay, they preach the word. They spread the gospel, so to speak. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. Okay. What he did there was truly amazing. Okay. Let's read the next verses. Acts chapter 8, verses 6 to 8. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to him. To, to what he said. Which tricks evil spirits came out of many and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great sign and wonder that accompanied his preaching. So there was great joy in that city. Okay? So maraming mga paralytics na healed. Okay? Those who had evil spirits, they were also healed. Okay? What was the result of these things? Acts chapter 8 Verse 12. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God, okay, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. As a result of his preaching, many were converted. Many believed in Jesus Christ. Okay, and they were baptized. Okay. Now let's jump down to verses 14 to 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to, uh, to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, they had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay. So in this instance, it's very clear that Philip did what was commanded of the disciples. When he fled to, to escape persecution, he did not forget the command to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, whatever place he went into. Okay. Now today, our method by which we reach others is different. Okay, so it's a different age. We have different uh, methods doing uh, the work. Okay. We utilize modern technology to preach the gospel. Tools are available to us today to do that. Okay? We take advantage of social media, of the digital platform, in the hope that we make an impact in their lives and have to make them notice of the message we preach. We have free literature okay, offered to all those who are interested. Okay? We use radio and television. So, we have those tools today. There is potential to reach a lot of people, okay, of sowing the seeds of hope and forgiveness in their hearts and minds. When we faithfully pay our tithes, okay, we are being part of a great work. Okay? These are used to fund, okay, to support the work that we do. When we pray for the work, we are part and parcel of it. Okay? We ask God to bless the work that we are doing, to protect the workers, okay? to add more people to the harvest. Okay? We are doing. Okay? That's what we should do. So we do have a great contribution or direct contribution to the work. But the thing is, it's still a different story when we make disciples of others on a personal manner, okay? And I'd like to explain that a little bit more in a while, okay? Some of you do that, okay? Personal evangelization, okay? But it may surprise you that we may not really have to go, you know, house to house, conduct house to house visits to convert other people, okay? We just have to be us as true disciples of Christ. We just have to be us as true disciples 
of Christ. Okay? What do I mean by that? We just have to act according to how Christ defines His true disciples. Okay? And here's how He says it in John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Okay? As Christ has loved us, okay, we must love one another. In other words, the love that we show to one another has just leveled up okay, according to how Christ loved us. So, kailangan natin pantayan yun, di ba? Verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Okay? If we love one another, okay, we are true disciples of Christ. Okay? So the true disciples of Christ show love as the dominant character of their lives. Okay? It's the dominant force that drives them to do what they have to do. And this is very important. We can only make people stop and listen to us if we show them that we are people who truly care, who sincerely helps without expecting anything in return. Okay? That we practice what we preach. Okay? That there is no double standard among us. And that is where you and I as individuals can have a huge impact on others. Okay. If, we, if we profess to be true Christians, and I'm sure they, are, they know we are different, okay, because we observe the Sabbaths, the annual and the weekly Sabbaths, that we follow the food laws, okay, that we keep our tithes, that we do not believe in traditional teachings about heaven or hell, or the immortality of the soul, or the very nature of the Godhead, or of the destiny of man, and so on, if they know okay, we are doing this and believe this, they would also expect us to behave like Christ. Okay. What did Christ say? As I have loved you, so you must love one another. The manner of loving was elevated to the plane that Christ would have loved. Okay. That's how we should love. That's the expectation of Christ. Or should I say that's the command of our Lord and Savior. And frankly, somehow, people would expect that of us. Right? Kung malaman nilang tunay na kristyano ka, they would expect okay, that you would behave in the manner okay, prescribed by Christ. Now, can you imagine someone, for example, me, okay, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and yet does not live according to the tenets of that kingdom? For example, I preach about the kingdom. And if my lifestyle says otherwise, okay, can you imagine uh, something like that? Can you imagine a preacher or someone else extolling the virtue of forgiveness and of love if he himself is full of hatred? Okay. Or can you imagine someone or me talking about humility? Then afterwards, you would find out that I am proud, that I have this bloated ego. Okay? If I behave like that, or if anyone who preaches about the kingdom of God behaves like that, that's the case, we would have failed with what has been commanded of us. I would have failed. Diba? How do we expect to make disciples of another if we do not show, for example, patience in answering someone to the best of our knowledge? Ang tanong siya. Okay? Tapos, hindi natin nagustuhan. Okay? Tapos, sinagot natin siya ng hindi rin maganda. How do you expect that people would come back to us? Okay? How do we expect to make another disciple if we do not show the proper example? if we do not act like true disciples of Christ. 
So here is where you and I can make a lot of difference in the lives of others. Even if we do not, you know, do the actual preaching or teaching or evangelizing. Okay. For example, I know of three, inst three instances in this church, okay, where the spouses were converted because of the spouse, the member, just being himself or herself. Ang sabi sa akin ng mga ito is they did not preach or teach or whatever sa kanilang mga asawa. Okay? Just because yung isa nawawala every Sabbath day, nawawala every uh, Feast of Tabernacles, the spouse got curious. Ano ba itong ginagawa? Ang pagka nawawala? And then nag-explain si spouse. This is what I believe in now. This is the Sabbath. This is the Sabbath. Ah, ganun ba? Pwede ba akong sumama? Okay? Of course. Pwedeng pwede. And, and the rest is history. Okay? The spouse got converted and is baptized and is now a member of this church. Okay? Same thing goes for the two other instances. Okay? Hindi daw sila nag-preach. Hindi daw nila punersa. Okay? Yung kailang mga asawa. To believe what we believe. Okay? Just by being a good example, okay, they were able to, you know, show the way. So we just have to be good uh, examples, as Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. In other words, people should not find anything in us that they can use as an excuse for not believing the gospel that we preach. Okay? Dapat wala hindi tayo magpulaan, kumbaga. Be a true disciple first before anything else. Okay? Before even thinking of fulfilling the Great Commission. And I think that it has a lot of impact on what we do as we teach others what Christ commanded us. Okay? If we try to pre preach to others, if we try to teach them, okay, we must make sure that we ourselves would apply what we teach them. So part of the commission to preach the gospel is to teach all things that Christ taught. Okay? So then teaching them everything I have commanded you. That's part and parcel of what we are to do. Well, there are many things, there are many things that Christ taught. He certainly taught and preached the coming kingdom of God. Okay? That's the first thing he did when he began his ministry on this earth. Let's go to Mark. Chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. Okay. Let me find Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 15. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Okay? Repent and believe the good news. He came to preach repentance so that people may enter God's kingdom. Okay? If we don't think about it, many of the things or the teachings of Christ can be summarized into that fairly simple statement. Repent and believe the good news. Okay? Many of the things that he taught can be summarized into that compressed into that statement. Certainly what he thought, or what, when he thought about the so-called Beatitudes, he was calling for repentance, a change in heart and mindset, to take on a new attitude that is more attuned to God's, from human attitude to that of the divine attitude. Let's revisit some of this. So let's go to Mark, chapter five, uh, Matthew, sorry. Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 10. We'll uh, read part of the 
so-called Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 10. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These do not come naturally to the majority. Okay? This, we are not born with it. Most people are not meek. Instead, there is this attitude of being superior to others. Okay? I am better than others. That's the mentality of majority. Walang alam yun. Mas magaling ako dyan. Mas marami kong alam sa kanya. Diba? Many certainly are not merciful. Much less pure in heart. Majority certainly have had malice in their hearts at one time or another. Okay. Christ is saying, we are blessed if we acquire these qualities, the ones that I have mentioned, because they eventually lead us to God's kingdom. Okay. To acquire them means to repent of the old attitudes and replace them with this. Hindi po pwede maging vacuum. You remove yung pagiging unmerciful mo, and then nothing would replace it. It has to be replaced by being merciful. Okay? Now it would be most interesting to note that Christ upheld the Ten Commandments contrary to the many teachings or teachings of many so-called Christian denominations out there. They say that the, mail, the Ten Commandments were already nailed to the cross, that they are no longer in force. That they no longer apply to us today. Okay? But Christ said otherwise. And that one is recorded for us in verse 17 of the same chapter. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Okay? That's what Christ is saying. Now, notwithstanding what they say to justify their teaching, I think Christ said this to stress the point of the importance of the commandments. They cannot be abolished because they form the backbone of what He came to preach. Okay. If indeed they were abolished, what He says in another place of the same chapter would not make sense. For example, would this make sense if the Ten Commandments were already abolished? Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 28. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay. Verse 28 would not make sense if the law against adultery is no longer in effect. How can you say looking at a woman lustfully already constitutes adultery if there is no law against adultery? Would it make sense? It doesn't, I guess. If there is no prohibition against adultery, then one can by all means look lustfully at a woman or a man if there's no law against adultery. There's no sense in saying verse 28 at all. And I hope that we do get that point. When Christ said the following in Matthew chapter 5, verses 30 to 44, He was essentially asking us to repent. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 44. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Gantihan po. You take out my right eye, Take out your right eye. You knock one of my tooth, I knock two of your 
please. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Uh, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, okay, turn to him the other also. Okay. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him take your cloak as well. Okay. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Lubos lubosin mo na. One mile, sige. Kaya ko pa naman ng two miles, malakas pa naman ako. Diba? Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to bury from you. So if I approach you, eh, joke lang. <laughs> do not turn away from me. If I want to bury from you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Nasaan na ako? Verse 43. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Oh, that's very easy, right? Love my neighbor and hate my enemy. That is so very easy to do, right? It comes naturally. Oh, I hate this person. I'm gonna hate him for the rest of my life. Diba? But I tell you, verse 44, sabi dito, Love your enemies. No? Parang biglang humira. Okay? How can I love my enemy? I hate him so much. Okay? And pray for those who what? persecute you. Okay? Hirap yata nun. Pinipersecute ka na, and yet you pray for that person. Okay? That is so difficult to do. So what Christ is asking us is to take on a new approach in dealing with others when they hurt us, abuse us, or persecute us. Okay? So he's asking us to make a shift or change in mindset. He is asking us to love them. We are just going back to what Christ said. Would you identify us as true disciples of Christ? Love one another as I have loved you. Okay? Babalik at babalik po siya doon. Okay? Now, to the hearer of all these things that we teach, mabinanggit ko kanina, they will only make sense and be real to him or her if first and foremost, those who are teaching it are doing the same thing sincerely. Not just for show, not just during the Sabbath service or holiday uh, observances. Okay? It must be real. It must be sincere. And it can be detected. That's the scary part. Or should I say, that's the beauty of it. Okay? False pretenses can easily be detected. A truly converted Christian can be felt by anyone. It cannot be fake. Okay? A true Christian's behavior emanates from his heart. Okay? And it's driven by love. Right? It cannot be fake. It is shown in the way we conduct ourselves outside of the church. Outside of the confines of the Sabbath day or other days or other holiday observances. In other words, right outside, I'm sorry, my feet, right outside the world. Okay? It is shown in our unguarded moments. Okay? When we are under pressure or duress, when we are confronted with the unexpected, okay? how do we react? To those situations. Those are the moments that will make or break us in the eyes of others as professing true disciples of Christ. And that, my dear brethren, can easily affect our effectiveness in doing the work God has set for us. Okay? It will have an impact on how we do the work that God has given us. Imagine how easier it would it be to teach others about being forgiving when people we work with at the office, when neighbors, when associates, 
When relatives know we are ourselves forgiving. Okay? Mas madali po yun, di ba? Magturo. Magpatuto kang magpatawad. Sabihin naman nung kapitbahay, ba't ako tinuturuan? Ikaw nga, di marunong patawad. Di ba? We will only get mocked. Okay? And we blaspheme God's name that way. Okay? If we do not practice what we preach. Okay? Imagine how easier it would be to tell others to not get so angry or angry so easily for the flimsiest of reasons. Okay? When we ourselves do not make a fuss out of little things. Cool lang tayo. Chill lang. Sabi nga nila. Diba? Don't make a mountain out of a mole here. Right? If you do that, then people will definitely listen to us. Imagine how great a help we can be to other people when we extend a helping hand without asking for anything in return, when we do not charge them interest if they borrow money from us, when we do not do the helping just to be praised and noticed by others. Okay? It doesn't matter if people do not know that we are helping them. God knows. That's what it really, that's what, that all that matters, right? This would help our cause a very long way. Okay? We would have shown integrity. We would have shown consistency. We would have shown character, right? Those who do not share our faith would have at least known someone from those who represent the way of life of God. Okay? At least meron silang nakita na tunay na kristyano. Okay? Imagine how we can touch the lives of others with a quiet, unassuming way we conduct ourselves before them. We do not brag. We are not biased. We are not warmongers. We respect other people's opinions about certain things. We laugh with them. We cry with them. We empathize with them. We love them as potential brothers and sisters in Christ, which everyone is. Because all of us were created in the image and likeness of God. Right? This, my dear brethren, is one way we preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Okay? For sure, we may not be doing as it was done before. Okay? When through many miracles, the early disciples did the work of God. Okay? There were many accompanying uh, miracles during the time of the disciples. Imagine, pagdan lang ni uh, Peter, a man was healed. Right? Those are very powerful miracles. Okay. But I do believe that there is at least one miracle that happened to you and me first then enable us to be part of the work. You and I were called by the Father. God drew us to Him. When we responded, we now have a part in the spreading of the good news. I consider this as a miracle because, frankly, I could not explain why of the many billions of people today, we are here in this church. I cannot explain. I wish I could read really explain it. But I cannot offer to you what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 26, verses 2 30. This is the closest that I could uh, give you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 30. 1, 26 to 30. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. So the context of these passages is us true Christians okay? when we were called not many of you were wise by human standards who among here has a degree or PhD MA MS but not many not many were influential sino po yung may followers dito na 2 million 1 million 100 <laughs> okay that's good enough diba not many were of noble birth. Who has royal blood among us here? Blue. De. Okay. None, diba? Or not many. 
Verse 27, I'm, I'm sure you, well, some may not like this, but here it is. But God chose the who what? foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Wow, we are foolish. Okay, at least in the sight of others, right? God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. We are weak in the sight of others, di ba? Anong mercy, mercy pinagsasabi niyo dyan? Pag sinaktan ka, saktan mo rin. You are weak pag hindi ka gumanti. Di ba? He chose the lowly things of this world and, this, and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Oh, God called me because I am of royal birth. Oh, God chose me because I am very wise. Oh, God chose me because I am very uh, influential. Think about it, my dear brethren. It's a miracle to me. Okay? Continuing. It is because, uh, verse 30, it is because of Him that you are in Christ Jesus. We are here because God chose us. Think about it. It's a miracle. God chose you over so many others today. Who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Okay. The other miracle that happens after that is the change that God expects in us and our lives. So we can become instruments in His hands to call other people. Okay. The first miracle, you were called by God. The next miracle, there's a transformation that happens in our lives. Okay? If people knew us before as someone who was a temper and after conversion mellows down, okay, hindi na laging nagagalit, paminsan-minsan na lang, they would, have a wit they would have witnessed a miracle of transformation in character. Magugulat yung kapit bahay mo, anong nangyari dito? Anong nakain niya? Parang biglang gumait. Who knows, they might be interested in what we believe in now. Ano kayong pinaniniwala nito ngayon? Okay. If people knew us as someone who is workaholic and then there's our time on Saturdays and now rests on the Sabbath, they would have witnessed a miracle of transformation in mindset and priorities. Okay. O pre, ba't hindi ka na nagtatabaho ngayon? Hindi ka na nagtatabaho ng Sabbath? Parang Sabado. Eh, kasi nag-observe na ako ng Sabbath. Anong Sabbath? Okay. Then you go on to explain what this is, what this uh, Sabbath is all about. Okay. It's an opportunity okay, that might present itself to share what we believe in now. Okay. It's an opportunity for you to spread the gospel. For you to share the truth. Okay. If people knew us as someone who eats anything and everything before, and now we adhere to the food laws, then they would have witnessed a miracle of transformation in the exercise of will power. Okay? They would definitely ask why. Hindi na perhaps. They would definitely ask why. Oh, pre, ba't hindi ka na kumakain ng ganito? Dati gusto gusto mo yan, paborito mo yan. Diba? It's an opportunity, okay? We now have the change or the chance to explain why. We will be witnesses for these people of the great power of the gospel to transform lives, to change humanity for the better. Okay? We would have witness for them. If we are able to do just this, we would have already extended an invitation. For them to take a look into this gospel, okay, among the spheres of your, among your uh, spheres of influence, the gospel is something unique, never been preached in traditional Christianity. Okay? But what may appeal to them more is the it is power to really make a lasting transformation in those who practice what it teaches, in the real tangible hope that it offers and of the astounding promise it makes to those who abide by it until the very end. 
speaking of the very end, before we close this message, okay, you know, I clue. Q pala, sorry. Let us remember that there is a promise of Christ Himself in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This promise means that He will see to it that His work will still exist until the very end of the age. Okay? Even if we are gone today, somebody will pick up where we left and continue this great work of preaching the gospel. Hence, we find that through the ages, from that time up until now, the preaching of the gospel still continues and it will continue. It should be of great comfort to all of us doing the work. It means he will never leave his church. It also means that on a personal level, he will never leave us or forsake us. Okay. Why? Because we are the ones doing his work. Right? We are his instruments. We are God's fellow worker. He's working with us to make us conform to his image and likeness. He's working with us to call out others. I'm sure he wants us to succeed. Right? Because our success also means the success of this program of salvation on this earth. Right? We succeed. God will succeed. Right? So my dear brethren, let us not forget the work that is set before us. After all, there's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Christ told his disciples in Luke chapter 10 verses uh, chapter 10 verse 2 for our closing scriptures Luke chapter 10 in verse 2 He told them the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few ask the lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field You are the workers you are the workers okay, sent out into the world. Okay. Dear brethren, I'm sure you are up to the task because you are still here, okay, doing your best to live up to being true disciples of Christ and in the process showing those within your spheres of influence, friends, family, colleagues, relatives, associates, co-workers, so on, what it's like to believe in and live by the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. By doing so, you are witnessing for Christ and for the life-changing and life-enabling message of the good news of the coming kingdom of God. And God speed the day of its coming.